Hello everybody and welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 how-to video. Today we're going to talk about joining and setting up a multiplayer dedicated server. So this video is going to be about renting a dedicated server from a server host. I'm going to have another video later that's going to be talking about setting up your own private dedicated server on a computer that you yourself manage and control. But multiplayer has never been so exciting for farm sim as it is now with Farming Simulator 22 because players across all platforms can now play together on the same dedicated server where you have the game running 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Up to this point, console players have been limited to player to player multiplayer sessions. In order for a console player to have a long running multiplayer session, someone's console has to be up and running all the time, but that is no more because now console players have access to dedicated servers in the same way that PC players have had access to dedicated servers for years. This video is going to talk to you about how to set up one of those dedicated servers and then connect to it and play online with your friends. So from the main menu, first thing you're going to need to do is go to multiplayer. And from here, in order to get a dedicated server, well, you're going to need to rent a dedicated server. So Giants has made it fairly simple. What we can do is we can click this button right here. And what it's going to do is on a PC, it's going to pop out a web browser and show you several dedicated server providers the Giants has partnered with. I don't know what it's going to do on console. It may open a browser window in your console session. So let's take a look and see what that page looks like. Once the page loads up, you're going to see something that looks like this. Giants has six host partners listed here on this page. And what they're going to do is they're going to provide you a dedicated server with a web portal that you're going to be able to connect to, configure up, upload, mods and then be able to connect to that dedicated server through the game. So those partners are Nitrito, Very Games, Game Servers, 4Net Players, G Portal and Fragnet. Now, I've been using Game Servers for several years for my own Farm Sim servers that we use in the Discord. I've had Farm Sim 17 servers from them. 19 servers from them, and now Farm Sim 22 servers from them. I have an affiliate link down in the description below. If you feel so inclined, go ahead and take a look at that. They have very interesting and attractive rates. And in fact, they have a forever sale going on to give you an additional 20% off. So the forever sale is basically the game year 2021, and then the word sale after it. Come next year, 2022, there will be. 2022 sale. It's pretty straightforward. But at any rate, if you want to take a look at them, it'd be much appreciated. I do get a little bit of a credit for any servers rented through that link. And the credit goes to directly pay for other dedicated servers that we run in the Discord. I will go ahead and put a link to the Discord down in the description below also, because we run community multiplayer servers. And then from time to time, we have a little bit more closed off group multiplayer servers where just a core group of players in the Discord get together and they decide, you know what, let's do a multiplayer server about this map. And then what we do is I just take the credit that I get from you guys looking at that affiliate link and potentially renting servers through game servers. I use that credit to help pay for all of the dedicated servers that I manage and run for my community members in my Discord. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the web portal looks like after you have rented it from one of these six providers. Well then, usually a fairly short order after you've rented your server, you're gonna get an email that's gonna give you a web link, username and password. And that's gonna take you to your dedicated server web portal. And that's what we have right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in to this server and then we'll take a look and see what type of settings we have on the other side. Once we've logged in with the admin account provided, 
you can see that we have several things that we need to fill out here. We need to give the server a name. We need to set the admin password for the server. We need to set a game server password. We can select and pick which game slot we wish to use, up to 20 game slots. We can pick which starting map we're going to use. We can pick the starting mode that we wish to use, farm manager and start from scratch. The number of slots is fixed. You can purchase a server from anywhere from, I believe, four slots is the minimum to 16 slots. And the slot count is basically the total number of concurrent players that can be on the server at any one point in time. So I have a 10 slot server here. So that is gonna allow me to have up to 10 concurrent players on the server at any point in time. More than 10 players can join. It's just we cannot have more than 10 players on at any one point in time. Game language, we're just gonna leave it on English. Auto save interval. Right now it's set to 180 minutes. I like to personally set this to 60 minutes. Pause game if empty. We have instantly or no. And what this will do is the server will detect. If there's no one in, it will pause the game. And as such, no time will pass until the next person joins. Some players like to have that set. Other players like to have a server where time progresses regardless if you're in the server or not. So if you want the time to progress, then you say pause game if empty, no. If you want the game to pause when no one's in the server, then you want to leave it to instantly. Cross play is allowed, yes or no. So if you want to allow console players to join your dedicated server, make sure this is checked. If you want to leave this server to be PC only, then you want to uncheck it so that it is not allowed. So we're going to leave it checked. So I would say go up here and at this point, fill in the server name that you want to have for your server when you go to it in game and find it in the list of dedicated servers. The administrator password is going to be the password that you need to enter when you are in the multiplayer session in order to become an admin in the session. The game password is the password that you're going to need to enter in order to join the server. I highly recommend that you always have a dedicated server set up with a game password. If you do not, then that means that anybody could join your server if they have the mods that are available on the server. And typically you don't want that. You don't want just a random showing up in your server. You're gonna to wanna to set a password here that is case sensitive. And then you're gonna share that password out to your friends and only your friends. So you definitely know who is joining your server and who is not. Save game slot. It doesn't really matter. They're all empty at the start of a server. As you progress through, these are gonna be occupied with previous save games on previous maps. So picking save game slot one is just fine. Career mode. You can pick farm manager or start from scratch. There is a way to start and put a new farmer game save on your server. And in order to do that, you have to zip up your local game save on your PC. If you're a console player, I don't think you have any way of exporting your save game to some sort of medium that you would then be able to upload to the server. So I think you're gonna be stuck at Farm Manager and start from scratch. But I will show you a little side segment here in a little bit, as far as PC players go, how to zip up your save game and then upload it to the server. Now, once you've filled in all the blanks and you're ready to go, you wanna hit save to save your settings. And now with the settings saved, what you're gonna to wanna to do is move over here to mods because we all wanna know how to upload mods. So here we are in the mods listing. 
And what you're gonna see at the very top is gonna to be the mods currently loaded on the server. With a brand new server here, right at the start of Farm Sim 22, the only thing listed is the Kloss Zerion saddle track, which was part of the pre-order bonus. You can see that it is currently set to not active. And do note, in order to join the server, all players must have all mods and all DLC that are enabled. So if you know that there are players that do not have the saddle track, do not enable this mod or this DLC because then players that do not have it will not be able to join. So from down here, we can click. The easiest way to upload a mod or add a mod to a server is to just click here and it will download it directly from Giants. Now, from a sustainability standpoint, this is not necessarily the most sustainable way of doing things because in the long run, this list is gonna be unruly and you'll notice it's only the latest mods. This isn't gonna be a full list of all the mods. We have latest, tested, and top downloaded. Over the progression of Farm Sim 22, there's definitely going to be mods that we're not going to be able to add to this server. So what you're going to need to do is go to the Mod Hub website. And the best thing to do is to download the mods you want to use from the website and then upload them using this function right here. So let me go ahead and get some mods loaded up and I'll be right back with you. So to upload mods to the server, you're gonna to want to click choose files, and then it's gonna bring up this open dialog box. Navigate to where you have the mods that you wish to upload to the server listed at. And I'm just gonna use my downloads folder because that's just where I have them. You can upload mods individually just by picking this and clicking open. Or if you want, you can multi-select by clicking the top mod, holding shift, clicking the bottom mod, and now we have multi-selected these five mods and we can click open. You'll see down here, it says five files. And at this point we can hit upload. And now we are currently uploading those mods to the server that is now done. Do note that the maximum upload file size is 1.71 gigabytes. That is a little misleading. It's actually a bit bigger than that. Um, but when you are doing your multi-select and you do have a big list of mods, be sure that you do keep it under approximately 1.9 gigabytes and you should be fine. So if we take a look up here now, you're going to see that we have all of our mods that we have uploaded to the server are all listed here. You can see they're all not active and we can either save or download the mod or we can delete the mod off the server. Should there be mods that have updates, there will be updates listed down here, and then you can basically click on this and download the latest version of the mod. But do note, like I said earlier, all players on the server must have the same version of all mods, and they also must have access to all those mods in order to be able to join. So. If, for example, this New Holland W190D gets updated tomorrow and is now version 1.1, if a player updates their mod on their computer or console, but the server does not update the version on the server, that player will not be able to join until they downgrade their mod to the versions on the server. The same if the server updates to version 1.1, but none of the players update, then they will not be able to join until they download the most recent version from either the mod hub or directly from the server. Now, speaking of downloading mods from the server, we can enable that by going to the settings up here at the top. At this point, what we need to do is we're gonna scroll down to the bottom and we're going to enable the public mod download. And we're going to hit activate. And now that we have done that, we're going to see at the very bottom, 
there is going to be a URL that you're going to be able to click and select to directly download the mods that are currently active on the server. Other things that you can set up from the settings menu is manage web users. So from here, you can add users to the web portal. You can give them specific permission. So if you're going to have others helping you out on the server, but you don't want to necessarily give them the admin username and password, you can basically add other users to the web portal. This is not adding them to the game save. This is only adding them to be able to log into the web portal, which is what we're looking at here. And you can give them access to be able to do certain things from within the web portal. You also have access to log files where you can come and see if you're having an issue with the server, if there's anything specifically listed in the game log, the server log, or the web server log. And then if you download a dedicated server app from Android or iPhone, then you can basically get a pin code from here to link your app to your dedicated server. And what's neat about that is you'll be able to do certain, certain things like restart the server, turn it on or turn it off. You'll be able to see who might be online at any one point in time on the server. You'll also be able to see specific um, configuration items about the server. If you need to change a password, you can do that from the web app. You can also see statistics about the server, number of people connected, how long they've been connected, how well is the server doing as far as resource utilization, et cetera, all from the dedicated farming simulator, dedicated server app. So now that we're back on the home page, by clicking home up here in the navigation, we're gonna scroll to the bottom. And from this, we're gonna activate particular mods on our server. So I'm gonna activate all of these mods with the exception of the Colossus Zerion saddle track. And then I'm gonna click activate. And then you're gonna see that the mods are gonna move from the activate mods list to the active mods list. And then if for any reason we wish to deactivate a mod, we can just select it and hit deactivate. And you're gonna see it move down from active to activate mods, which simply says that it is on the server, but it is not active for this particular game session. Now, once you are completely satisfied that you have a good server name, a good administrator password, and a good game password, you have the right map selected, the right career mode selected, then you can go ahead and hit start. But we're not gonna quite do that right now. We're gonna jump over and I'm gonna show you how to upload your own game save to the dedicated server. So for PC players that wish to upload your own game save to the dedicated server, and you may wanna do this for a few reasons. One, you may wanna upload a new farmer game save to the server. Two, you may have done some prep work on setting things up locally, and then you wanna upload that particular save to the server. This is how you do it. So you wanna to go to your documents, my games, Farming Simulator 2022 folder. And from here, you're gonna find your various save games. So I've got save game one through four and save game 20. And save game 20 is what I wanna upload to the server. So what you need to do is you need to select all. So the easiest way to do that is hit control and then A to select all. Then we're gonna right click and we're gonna to select send to compressed zip folder. And then we're gonna name it something. We're gonna call this Elm Creek server. Okay, and now we're gonna come over to our dedicated server and we're gonna upload this file to the server. So we're back on the server and we're gonna click on the save games navigation here at the top. And we're gonna get a screen like this. 
Right now, we don't have any saved games up here on the server because, well, it's a brand new install. What we want to do is we want to say we want to upload a save game. We want to pick one. What save game slot are we going to move this upload into? And you do not have to match. So locally, I was in save game slot 20. You do not have to pick save game slot 20 if you want. You can have it in save game slot one or any of the other save game slots. We can give it a name. If we want, and then we're gonna click choose file. We're gonna to navigate to where we have that zip saved and we're gonna add it to the server. Once we have it added here, we're gonna hit upload. And now our zip has been uploaded to the server, Elm Creek Community. The map is Elm Creek. You can see the amount of money, the playtime, and the difficulty set to new farmer. So if we come back here to home, and then we scroll down here, you're gonna see that we have save game slot one is preoccupied with the map Elm Creek, the amount of money, and the map and the career mode have now been grayed out because they are not selectable anymore because they are being picked based on the save game. So at this point, assuming everything is in here as you want it, then you're gonna wanna go ahead and come down here and click start and the server is gonna start up. So once you start the server, your view is gonna change a little bit and this is what you're gonna see. We have our CPU resource utilization over the last 30 minutes on our server. Now, when you rent servers from providers like game servers, very games, or the other four other providers that were listed on the other page, what you're renting is shared time on a shared server. So while it says farm sim dedicated server, you're not getting a actual physical server dedicated to just you. You're getting a shared server, but you're getting dedicated space on that shared server for your save game and your web play. So you'll see that we have resource utilization over here. It's not bad at all. You'll see our RAM utilization, our hard drive utilization, uptime, and the number of players that have been connected to the server over the last 24 hours. Now you'll notice, the hard disk has a four gigabyte limit. So most web host providers for farm sim dedicated servers are gonna provide you with four gigs of mod space for your server. So as we progress through farm sim 22's lifespan, you're not gonna be able to put every mod that you find on your dedicated server. You're gonna to have to pick and choose what mods go up here because of this disk space limit. So just be aware that what goes into your disk space limit is the server save game backups, your mods, and your maps that you upload. DLC do not count toward your save game or your hard disk storage space. So as we progress through time and we have more and more DLC, they do not go against your hard disk quota. Only things that you upload, like mods and maps, and your save games and your save game backups. I think we've allowed plenty of time now to have our server boot up. So let's go ahead and jump back to the game and see if we can connect. So here we are back at the main game menu. We're gonna go to multiplayer again. But this time we're going to join a game. We're gonna wait for it to connect to the matchmaking server that Giants has. And now you can see that we have 22,898 servers currently listed in this particular matchmaking server. This is where having a filter comes into play significantly. So I'm gonna go ahead and start typing in the name of the server. So I named this particular server for this particular demonstration, random name here. So you can see I've typed in the word random and now I've narrowed my list down to 
one server out of 22,914 games now. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and select that server. And you'll notice that I cannot join the server. Start is not selected because I've got a problem. Okay, I've got a problem. And that's why we have the explanation mark here. So what we can do to troubleshoot my problem is I can hit details. And it's going to tell me what my problem is. My problem is not all mods are on your system. Oh. The Fiat is available, but these mods here are not on my system. I have forgotten to put these mods in my mod folder, or I've forgotten to download them from the mod hub. So what I can do is I can hit download mods and DLC. Do you want to download five mods from the mod hub? Well, yes, I do. And it is now downloading those mods for me and putting them in my mod folder. Now this only works for mod hub mods. And since we enabled crossplay, we're only going to be using mod hub mods anyway, because only mod hub mods will work for console participants in a crossplay enabled server. So if we disable crossplay and we download mods from some other random mod site, then this interface will not be able to download them automatically for us. We're going to have to know where to go to download those mods. And that's why enabling the public mod download link on the server is so important. So now we've downloaded all those mods. We're going to hit back. Do you want to restart? Sure. Now that our game's back up, let's go through this again. Multiplayer. Join game. It's connecting to the matchmaking server. Filters. Random name here. Now this time you'll see we do not have the explanation mark. So we can click it. And then we can hit start. It's asking us for the password. So now we need to type in the password. Remember, this is the game password. And this password is case sensitive. Now, once we've typed it in, it says connecting, please wait. And now we're just kind of waiting for the game to load up locally. And then once Elm Creek loads up locally, it's going to connect me to my server. I have the start button, I'm going to hit start, and now I am in, connected to my dedicated server that I have rented from game servers. I have configured it, and we are here. So that, guys, is how you configure a dedicated server with respect to the web interface, the web portal, and getting it up to the point that you can connect and that other players can connect. So I'm going to be doing other how-to videos with respect to permissions within the game. And now we also have voice chat in game. So we're going to talk about that also in a later video. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Hope it was extremely helpful. And like I said, if you feel so inclined, please consider using my affiliate link down in the description below to rent your servers from game servers. I do get a little bit of credit to my game servers account when you do do that. And I use that credit to pay for servers like this one that we're using for demonstration purposes and for the dedicated servers that we run over on my Discord. Those dedicated servers are open to all Discord members. And as such, if you feel so inclined, you can also join our Discord using the link down below in the description. So until next time, happy farming.